the built-in validators won't always match the exact use case of your application. In such scenarios, we can create our own custom validators. In this video, let's create a custom validator for the username field. If we enter the username as admin, we should display an error message, admin username not allowed. Now, a lot of the times you might want to filter out spam registrations. The username or email field usually contains a string to identify such spam registrations. Let's assume that the spam word is admin for our example. So let's see how to create the custom validator. A custom validator is nothing but a function. The function can be written right into the component file itself. But since validator functions are usually reused in several places in your application, it is always a good idea to create a separate file and export them. So in the app folder, I'm going to create a new folder called shared. Within the shared folder, a new file called username.validator.ts. Now let's define the validator function. I'm going to call the function forbidden name validator. The function accepts one parameter, which is the form control being validated. The type of the control is abstract control. Make sure to import it from angular slash forms. The validator function returns either of two values. When the validation fails, it returns an object where the key is of type string and the value is of type any. And if the validation passed, it returns null. In the function body, we first test if the form control value matches the pattern admin. So let's have a flag called forbidden and on the right hand side we use the test operator on the admin pattern. Basically what we are doing here is that if the username contains the string admin we set the forbidden flag to true else we set it to false. Now based on the forbidden flag, we can return either the object or null. So if forbidden, we return the error as forbidden name along with the form control value as the value property. So the name of the validation is forbidden name and the value is nothing but the control value that was passed. If forbidden is false, we simply return null. Finally, to be able to use this validator function, we need to export it. We have now created our own custom validator. Let's see how to use it. We go to app.component.ts and to the list of validations, add the validator function. The function name is forbidden name validator and make sure to import it from shared slash username dot validator dot ts. Also make sure you have specified the validator in the validations array and not outside. Now displaying the error message is pretty straightforward. In app.component.html below the existing error messages add another error message. So let me copy paste this error message and make the modifications. Now the error in our case is called forbidden name. So let me copy this and paste it as the error. So the ngif condition now is username.errors.forbidden name. Now if this is true, we apply a class of text danger 
but the error message is going to be username not allowed. We can also go the extra mile and specify the value that is not allowed as well. So you can see that we are specifying the value property here. So in the error message, I can use interpolation username dot errors dot forbidden name dot value. So value is going to give us the value of the form control. If you now take a look at the browser, type the username as admin and tab out, you can see admin username not allowed. Our custom validation works perfectly fine. Now it is also possible to pass parameters to custom validators. For example, right now we are forbidding the string admin in the username. But there could be another field that forbids the string password. So we should be able to pass in the string we want to forbid as a parameter to our custom validator. Let's see how to do that. I'm going to go back to VS Code and go back to username.validator.ts. Now we have seen how to create a validator function. But the drawback of a validator function is that it can accept only one parameter which is the form control. So we cannot simply pass in a second parameter. Instead, what we have to do is create a factory function that accepts a string as a parameter and returns the validator function itself. Now that sounds way more complicated than it actually is, so let me help you understand with code. First, start with the function that accepts a parameter of type regex, which is the pattern we have to validate against. Let's call the parameter forbidden name. This function returns a validator function. So the return type is validator function. Make sure to import it from angular slash forms. For the function body, we simply copy paste the validator function we have already created. Next, add the arrow syntax after the return type to convert this into a proper function. So after null, fat arrow. Next, make sure to return the validator function and export the factory function. So let's return this and export this. Let me also get rid of the old function. Finally, make use of the forbidden name parameter instead of the hard-coded admin regex. So replace admin with forbidden name. So we have created a function which returns a validator function. Or in complicated words, we have created a factory function. Now in the form control, we can specify the pattern as a parameter. And the pattern is the string password. Now if we save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that when I type password, we get the error. Password username not allowed. All right, that is how you create a custom validator with parameters in reactive forms. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.